Hey folks, this is Carlos with Buckaroo Gear. Uh, John Willemsma and myself wanted to put this little video together for uh, any customers that are looking to buy a saddle in the future or just uh, you know customers in general that are interested in purchasing a saddle. Although I'm a craftsman myself and built several different things, I've never built a saddle. So this is just a little perspective from a first time saddle builder. Enjoy. We're here in the shop. This is the end of our first day. Uh, talking with Carlos about working on his first saddle and wanted to get his impressions about what we're doing and what he accomplished today. And talking about how he feels, what he's learned about putting in ground seats, one of the most important parts of what your saddle consists of. And we're looking at fit on the horse, Look, but this part looking at fit for the rider and just wanted to get Carlos's ideas of what he's gathered today and how he feels about what's involved in working on the main part the first day of the saddle. Well, I tell you, John, there's a, there's a lot that goes into it that people don't even see. And when you start out with just a bare tree like this, to get from that point to this point, uh, the individual pieces that are so important to making that ground seed and prepping the tree to get it ready for the next step. Um, the one thing that I found really interesting is uh, as you glue layers of leather on here for your ground seat, you're shaping, you're constantly shaping that ground seat. Everything that goes underneath this is, is a build up for the, next, for the next piece. It's a building block, it's a step. And uh, it's, there's a lot to it. It was a full day to get to this point, and a lot of people probably wouldn't even think you spent a full day to get to this point, but there's a lot a lot going on, a lot taking place underneath here that uh, is very important to the saddle. And uh, I think it's great that we're able to take some video and show people some of the things that they never see because the finished product, the finished saddle, the finished product covers up all of this. Okay, we're here at day two. We finished our day. Uh, we took, we got Carlos from where we could put the ground seat in. Uh, we hung our rigs, prepared our leather properly to get it where we could get our squall cover on and our skirts on and uh, give them time to dry overnight and have the proper shape. And I just wanted Carlos to talk about what he gathered from the aspect of how to shape the ground seat, where to set how the rigs were hung and just the importance of, of uh, preparing your leather and, and getting it, cutting your leather from the right point and then and shaping everything and having the right case and moisture content. Well, uh, like John said, firstly what we did is uh, finish up the ground seat. Uh, John really emphasized the sweet spot in here, which is a flat spot over the middle of the seat, getting the proper contour and the shape of the ground seat. Um, it's something that that uh, getting it uh, properly laid in there, getting it shaved down properly, comes with a lot of experience on John's part. Um, we had a really good foundation to start with and uh, John helped me shape it up. Um, after that, we, we hung our riggings, got the uh, uh, everything hung level, straight, uh, we worked, we worked, uh, he's kind of fussy about making sure we had everything symmetrical in here, getting our measurements correct over the sides, back to front. Um, can be a little bit tricky, but, uh, you know, with a little bit of time and patience, it pays off in the end to make sure everything's set, set in there right. And then, um, most importantly, probably the biggest uh, and most important lesson I took from yesterday was just the proper preparation of the leather. Um, a lot of people don't know at all about it, um, especially people that aren't experienced with leather at all or are working at, at working with leather. But casing the leather is probably one of the most important uh, factors in building the saddle. Um, casing the leather, making sure it gets uh, the proper moisture content in the leather 
In other words, you soak the leather in a tub of water before you start working with it. And that helps you get your proper contours and your proper shaping to the trees, to the tree, the bars, uh, the fork cover, the cantle back, everything. Um, you can see from yesterday to today how little of the tree you can see now because it's sandwiched in between the different layers of leather, the skirts, the riggings, the, the fork cover. And, um, you know, John really emphasized getting the proper contours, the proper fit, the proper, con uh, the proper shape to the leather, and uh, how important an extra 5, 10, 15 minutes can be to uh, getting that shape in there and letting that leather dry out to where it's going to hold its shape and keep its shape for the rest of its life on the saddle. Okay, Carlos and I, we got done with our third day. Uh, we got quite a bit done. The saddle's starting to look like a saddle now. Uh, we've got our seat basically fit and blocked in. And uh, we'll put it in for good here this morning. And then we've gotten our fenders put together, working as leather dries on one piece, putting together another part of your saddle, makes everything kind of streamlined where you can get one put together uh, fairly in a reasonable amount of time, uh, not wasting any precious time, dry time. So um, Carlo talked about how, you know, the seat went in and how we fit it. Uh, we've got our back jockeys fit and uh, so, to the point now is that uh, things are going to come together in, in a few days. We'll have a finished product. Yeah, okay, so uh, just like John said, you can see that the saddle is starting to resemble more and more the finished product. Um, again, very important how we case the leather, had the leather prepared, had the, the, the proper uh, dampness in the leather, and uh, we left the saddle on the drawdown. And to get the proper shape, and to get all the wrinkles out of our leather here, um, pulling all the leather up through the center to get the uh, to get the to get everything tight in here, so that um, these uh, seat jockeys stay down and, and not flare out. Pulling all the leather up through the center here and then back into the seat. Um, we got the, uh, the horn wrap and horn cap started. Again with this, the rear seat jockeys, same thing there with the preparation of the leather, the casing, getting the seat jockeys up in and tight, drawn down so that they're nice and tight and will stay that way for the life of the saddle. Very important. Just really learning a lot about the little things that it takes to get these things tight. It doesn't take long. It's just just uh, just little things, little steps in, prep, uh, in preparing the saddle and leather to get it to stay that way for the life of the saddle. And then over here, you can see that we got the uh, fenders and the stirrup leathers all, all cut out, prepared. Again, these were cased. We got them twisted and wrapped, and then on the drawdown to where uh, they're stretched. They dried overnight, and uh, that's the way they'll be for the life of the saddle. So uh, there won't be there won't be any fatigue on the rider's leg because of the wrap in the stirrup. And uh, I know probably most people are familiar with the wrap in the stirrup on buffaroo saddles or cowboy type saddles, but you don't really see a lot of this in the arena world or with uh, show show type saddles. So this is a little extra step a custom saddle maker will take to. Uh, keep the stirrups turned out and keep the rider from getting fatigued.